Valve's Steam Deck garnered almost universal acclaim when it launched in 2022. It offered a powerful handheld experience, with well-designed software and plenty of hardware power, but the screen certainly left something to be desired, with low contrast, poor color reproduction, and a decent bit of display lag. There are options, however, for the millions of original Steam Deck owners out there. You could, of course, upgrade to Valve's Steam Deck OLED, which comprehensively solves those issues, or opt for a full display replacement in the form of the Deck HD, which offers a higher resolution and higher quality LCD panel. So today we'll be evaluating those two options to see which upgrade path works best for original Steam Deck users. First, let's take a deep dive into the Deck HD. This is a 99 US dollar display replacement that's available for the original Steam Deck, aka Steam Deck LCD, and should be a higher quality LCD panel. The Deck HD unit was provided to us fully assembled for the purposes of this review. I've got both devices set to the same settings here, which produces visibly similar color tone and temperature, and I've pegged both to about 50% brightness. Screen elements in the Deck HD unit will look a bit smaller here, which is a side effect of the increased panel resolution on the Deck HD, although this can be altered if you like. Here, I'm just evaluating the color reproduction on both units, where there isn't a huge discrepancy. In general, the Deck HD unit looks slightly redder overall, with a more neutral tone on dark colors, while the OG Deck looks slightly blue. In the sky here, Note how we're getting subtle purple tones on the Deck HD, which the base unit doesn't display. The Deck HD can actually reproduce more of sRGB according to the distributor. 87% of sRGB versus around 70% for the original Deck, but in actual games, you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. It's hard to precisely match brightness on both units, but I think both offer decent color reproduction for the most part. Comparing the two units side by side across a range of games, the color reproduction looks similar enough. When I pushed panel brightness to the max on both devices, the Deck HD appeared slightly dimmer, but not by much. The Deck HD has a matte screen coating, which should help to diminish glare, which isn't quite to my taste, but I know some users quite like. Image contrast also appeared stronger on the original unit slightly, which could be partly a byproduct of that matte screen. Off-axis viewing did look slightly better on my Deck HD unit, however, with brighter color at steep viewing angles. There's one last display issue that I wanted to note here, which I noticed on my Deck HD unit. There are some faint vertical lines that run vertically across the screen, which you should be able to notice in this footage. These are only an annoyance in fairly uniform, darker content, like solid gray interface elements but they are definitely present and do distract slightly. I'm not sure if this is just an issue with this review unit, or if these problems are present broadly across Deck HD panels. So overall, I think the Deck HD offers a decent enough screen that has somewhat mixed image characteristics relative to my 2022 LCD deck. But the star of the show here really is the upgrade from a 1280 by 800 screen on the base unit to 1920 by 1200 on the Deck HD. That's about 2.3 times the pixels, which makes for a pretty noticeable difference in a lot of games. The higher density pixel structure allows games to display finer detail on the Deck HD unit. If we compare the same games running on a Steam Deck at the different output resolutions of the two units, we get a good idea of the differences we can expect. At 1920 by 1200, the image does look perceptibly cleaner and more stable across a variety of titles. The Steam Deck pixel density is low enough that you will definitely be able to observe these improvements on an actual Steam Deck, even in games with good anti-aliasing. Now the base Steam Deck is perfectly capable of downscaling from 1920 by 1200, but you're just not going to see all this extra image detail. Of course, this comes with some serious performance implications. Some simpler or older titles, like Half-Life 2, can still hit 60fps perfectly fine at a full 1200p output. But a lot of modern games run very poorly here, with much worse performance than when running at 800p. 
scaling these games from 800p would produce noticeable panel blur and provide a worse image. But the Steam Deck doesn't really have the performance to deliver a good 1200p experience in most last gen or current gen software. Upsampling solutions can only go so far, as we already need to engage them in so many games on the regular 800p Steam Deck. I tested latency briefly, and I found a very similar response across a relatively laggy game, Resident Evil 4, with the built-in 30fps framerate cap. We're getting around 300 milliseconds of input lag here on both devices. Rounding out the performance figures, I also took a quick look at power consumption. Curiously, the Deck HD equipped model consistently clocked somewhat lower power consumption figures. I'm not sure if this is a consequence of the display, or perhaps I just have an inferior SoC in my existing Steam Deck LCD model. But in any case, I wouldn't expect a big power consumption divergence between the two systems. As a final note, the Deck HD isn't a standard Steam Deck component, and this leads to some headaches. The first and biggest hurdle is that the unit needs to be installed, which judging from impressions online, can be a multi-hour process that bears some difficulty. Then you have to flash the Steam Deck BIOS with proper support for the Deck HD, which fortunately can be completed entirely on the device itself, though you will have to repeat this 20 minute or so process whenever you upgrade the Steam Deck firmware. Continued Deck HD support in SteamOS is contingent on the Deck HD team or a third party continuing to issue these flashing scripts for new firmwares. Finally, if you want to play a game at native panel resolution, you will need to go into the properties menu for each game and set the resolution to 1920 by 1200 manually, which is a slight pain. So that's the Deck HD accounted for, but what about the Steam Deck OLED? This is a brand new Steam Deck unit, not a screen replacement, and comes priced to match at 550 US dollars for the base 512 gigabyte model, which I have here. But it comes with some big advantages, and I'd say it addresses the original Steam Deck's display issues more convincingly than the Deck HD. I'm going to go over the basics here quickly. For a more in-depth analysis, please check out Rich's review from a few months ago. Firstly, the contrast ratio, which sat in the 1200 to 1 range on the Deck LCD, is now practically infinite as the display has self-illuminating properties and black pixels can simply be turned off. In a game with a lot of dark content, like Persona 5, the difference can be fairly remarkable. Color reproduction at sharp viewing angles is nearly perfect on the OLED panel, and color reproduction in general is much better. The screen is substantially brighter in SDR content, with a peak brightness at 600 nits or so, but it supports HDR and can push all the way to 1000 nits in HDR content which makes for a transformative difference in games like Ori and the Will of the Wisps. The screen is also larger, at 7.4 inches compared to the Steam Deck LCD's 7-inch display. The one area where the Steam Deck OLED doesn't improve is the actual resolution of the panel, which remains at 1280 by 800. That means you get a similarly sharp rendition of fine detail. Obviously, higher resolutions do have some performance implications, but if you're looking for a crisper, less obviously pixelated image, you're not going to find it here. It does, however, have support for a wider range of refresh rates, supporting up to 90Hz refresh, which means you can target frame rates between 30 and 45 FPS much more effectively, as frame time drops are less punishing. The OLED display itself also has less latency typically than its LCD counterpart. And as a final bonus, the Steam Deck OLED also comes with a small performance advantage over the existing unit. The faster memory and more efficient APU total to about a 10% performance advantage on average in matching gameplay, which is a nice little bonus, although not transformative. So if that's how the Deck OLED compares to the original unit, how do the Deck HD and Deck OLED stack up? I think the big question here is how much value you put on that 1200p display on the Deck HD. A higher resolution panel is going to attract some people, though a higher resolution doesn't necessarily mean a better experience when it comes to higher end titles. For people who predominantly play 2D or older 3D games, I can definitely see it as a win but for most users, it's going to bring mixed blessings. 
In just about every other aspect, the DEC HD is thoroughly outclassed. The DEC OLED offers a display with infinite contrast, better brightness, great HDR support, higher refresh rates, a larger panel, better color reproduction, and comes with a decent little performance edge as well. It addresses the flaws of the original Steam Deck in a much more comprehensive manner than the DEC HD, and is simply a much higher quality display in general. OLED panels typically have much better display characteristics than IPS panels, and the Steam Deck OLED has a truly excellent OLED display. I think the Deck HD isn't a great option for those who are looking for a truly comprehensive upgrade over the Steam Deck LCD, but I think it does serve a purpose. If your Steam Deck has a failing screen and is out of warranty, you can purchase a replacement display from a site like iFixit with appropriate tools for about 65 US dollars. But if you did value that higher resolution support on the Deck HD, you could get a Deck HD display with tooling for about 100 US dollars. If you compare the Deck HD display to the Anti-Glare Steam Deck LCD available on iFixit, which is probably the more fair point of comparison if you value the Anti-Glare coating available on both units, they come out to the same price, 100 US dollars. At that price point, the Deck HD display is definitely worth recommending, especially if you're reasonably handy and don't mind any potential inconvenience that going with a non-standard display can bring. On the other hand, if you are looking for a display that will blow the decent but unexceptional original Steam Deck's display out of the water, there's just nothing like the Steam Deck OLED. Selling your Steam Deck LCD and opting for the OLED model seems like a reasonable choice in that circumstance. So I do think the Deck HD has a place in a post-Steam Deck OLED world. But if you really want a categorically better Steam Deck experience, the OLED model is the way to go. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfoundry.net for exclusive and early access content. And to get in touch, use social media. Thanks for watching.